located on the Mediterranean Sea, San Tropez has long been the desired destination of the famous, glamorous, and infamous. Today, this French seaside port plays host to the world's best sailors. Welcome to the France Sail Grand Prix San Tropez. Championship Sunday has arrived with plenty of storylines and drama after an exciting first day of racing. San Tropez welcomes the 10 international teams to Europe after the first two opening events of Season 4 on North American waters. Today, this iconic racing venue will crown an event champion and offer more clarity as to which team is a threat to claim the championship at the end of the season. Alongside past world champion Emily Nagel and Olympian Stevie Morrison, I'm Todd Harris. After three fleet races yesterday, there are two additional races today before the event final at the end of the day in which only the top three teams on points will race. Before we go racing, let's recap day one. Who can get on the foils first as we blast to night one? Australia just kept himself behind the line, but New Zealand out the middle of the line. To Canada, there's a third penalty of this race. New Zealand just in time, they had just enough speed to get over the top. It is New Zealand that wins race number one here at the Grand Sail Grand Prix Day 1 San Jose. Early start penalty Spain and Germany, no delayed starters. Oh my word, of oh, wow. the glory New Zealand giving up space to Denmark. But race number two here at the France Sail Grand Prix Saint Tropez will belong to the best riders, the three time reigning and defending champions, with race two in France. Love seeing the home of the favourites coming in and look how close the finish line is to them. Go! And we are clear start! Get calm, man. Jimmy Spithill now with the Americans as they approach gate number three in the final race of the day. French are forced to maneuver to keep out of the way of the Germans. A much needed victory for the American. And in race number three, Spinner and Company will take the victory on the Mediterranean. So after the first day of racing, the leaderboard for this event has Denmark and New Zealand tied on 21 points. The USA and Emirates GB are even on 20, and France and Australia tied at 19. Remember, only the top three on points will advance to the event final later today. It was after yesterday's racing when the added drama set in, severely affecting today's lineup. Look at that, there is no way that that wing is going back together very quickly. We finished the last race. We. Yeah, you know, as a group, we're obviously pretty happy because we managed to claw a few boats back from where we were at the, the first mark. And <clears throat> now we decided, because it's such a beautiful breeze, to go for a little sail down the course. And we're just actually rounding up the stop out on the, the port boundary next to you know, a couple of our friends and a lot of partners for the team on, on a boat. And then um, the whole wing snapped in half. So, yeah, I think. We were just incredibly lucky. Everyone was on the starboard side of the yacht, and the, the main element cleared us, and the middle element went straight backwards. So I think, you know, right now, we're just incredibly thankful everyone's safe. The biggest issue probably is this bottom flap, which is actually quite structural. And then we've still got half of the wing um, out at sea at the moment and getting brought back in by the salvage team. So have to assess that. That looked to have just cleared the boat, so hopefully there's not so much damage up there. Obviously that, the section that broke itself, that's, um, that's a write-off, so yeah, I mean, hugely gutting, but um, we have to try and regroup and um, figure out a way to get back in the race for Tarantino, I reckon. So it is official and unfortunate New Zealand will not be able to sail today despite being tied for first place. So we've got two races, four and five, both fleet races before the event final where only the top three will compete. Right now, let's take a look at the course map. Well, the course here in San Tropez, as always, requires a fast start to lead at Mark 1. After the first turn, the boats can sail their own course, trying to find the shortest time between gates. At each gate, they can turn left or right. 
Remember, sailing boats only go up fast when they're sailing at an angle to the wind, so we see them zigzagging around the course to give themselves tactical advantage. It's a gusty, shifty wind here in Saint-Tropez, so sailing the shortest course and trying to stay on the foils is going to be the ticket to finishing first under the fans on the shoreline here in Saint-Tropez. So the crowds continue to make their way on land and sea to watch Championship Sunday go down here at the France Sail Grand Prix Saint-Tropez, event number three of season four. This is one of the highly anticipated events when they come to Europe, Stevie. Everyone wants to be in Saint-Tropez on Championship Sunday. Yeah, and I mean, that camera shot there showed us, didn't it? It's beautiful conditions. So board, here we go. Yeah, on board the Swiss boat here, Todd. And, and you can see it's a big day required for that team, I'd have said here, really. So we're going to see what they can do. Final 45 seconds before the start of race number four. Two fleet races and then the event final. Well, the positioning's pretty important now. They've got the smaller 24-meter wings here, but they've been sailing around well. It's just going to be this takeoff phase that's the really tricky bit with these wings. Comms are high at this point, well positioned. They're all quite a long way back, trying to give themselves a good run-up. Left-hand side of the screen's our start line. The blue triangle there suggesting the favor position. Australia looks pretty good for that. All the teams are long, long way back here. They're winding it up. Australia look well positioned. Canada at the top of the line and Great Britain. But how is the timing looking? I think they're late the Australians look good well positioned expect the line to turn white and we'll be go on day two here in Saint-Tropez brilliant start out the middle of the line for Canada Australia and Great Britain on the inside I think are going to be able to hold on to that inside line and should lead us away around mark one Denmark and Switzerland out the back but it is the Canadians the Australians and Great Britain as they make their way to mark number one this is race four on championship Sunday here in Central Bay absolutely crucial moment into mark one can Canada get clear ahead they've done it they've managed to convert that start they're round the British brilliant work by Phil Robertson and his crew there and now they're setting up for gate two nice lead for the Canadians a little more breathing room than yesterday. Remember, New Zealand not out on the water after that incident. Their boat unable to go, so it is Canada out in front. Great Britain, Australia, Spain, the USA, Germany, and France with Denmark and Switzerland out the back. And here we've got the live speeds for all the te top three teams, Canada, GBR, and Australia. 50 kilometers an hour of boat speed. That's equal to miles per hour and knots below. Here we go. Crucial stage in the race. We've heard a bit of onboard there. Annie, the strategist at the back of the Canadian boat, talking about being happy with the left turn. So she wants to come to gate two, turn left. She'll be trying to find more win on the race course and minimise the manoeuvres. They're nicely laid up here. And when you're out in front, the comms can generally be a little bit calmer. Bulling here, yeah. Yeah, the voice of Chris Draper, the wing trimmer there, talking about the setup of the boat, and then Phil Robertson is chatting tactics. So they're going to turn left at this mark, GBR, they've converted that good start, hanging on to second, and we're going to start to learn about the course. A lot of the crew seem pretty keen to head out with a left turn to what we'd call the right-hand side of the course as they make their way into the wind. Canada the first through, gate and number two. Emirates GBR in second, Spain right behind them. Australia decides to split the course. Germany goes the way of the Spanish. Yesterday we saw that Mark 1 position was critical for a good overall finishing result. So that's really good news for Canada and GBR. On board with Australia there. The French also opting for that side. And Jimmy Spithill in a great position right now. Not on this race, but he is sitting in the tie for second overall as they sit in seven. So points at a premium. Really, with Canada being out front, Stevie, this kind of changes the dynamics because they really don't have a chance to get into the final after that eight-point deduction. Yeah, I think they can't make it points-wise, but for Great Britain, they need a good day. Denmark and USA, they're seventh and eighth at the moment, but they were well up overnight, so they're going to have to start to move their way through the fleet. Nice manoeuvre. They turn the boat through the wind on board Great Britain there. Great manoeuvre, and they're showing us in the lead. These ladder lines on our course here show how far the boats have progressed up the course. But Canada, here they go. They're winding the speed up. They were first to be on the foils, and they're looking pretty fast. And just a reminder on the bottom left here of our race to the final. Currently, with these positions, this would see GBR take that lead spot, Australia and the Danish as well. But the Spanish are just on the edge of qualifying, so any points they can gain here are critical. Until 
a lot of points on the line. And as we see now, Canada, they're already talking about the next mover. When they turn their boat, the British will have the right of way. Tricky situation for Canada here. When they turn back, the British are going to be a problem for them. How well can they execute this turn? Canada makes the turn. Here comes Spain and Emirates GBR. Both of those boats have the right of way, so it's all Ooh, about judging tough. this cross. Also, Chris Drapery sounded calm. He was pretty happy they've made it. Great Britain decided to turn first. Now, Canada, well lined up for gate three. Can Ainsley and the British crew make this right turn? If they can make it round the right turn, they will be leading. But they're tight. They're close to the position. They've had to put it down. They're going to be slower than Canada, but I think they'll hold the inside position. Are you surprised that Ben Ainsley didn't hold that line a little longer and maybe make it difficult for Canada? I think he just knew that if he'd made it difficult for Canada, Canada would have shot round behind them and been so much faster that he had to try and position his boat in front. So it was good positioning by Ainsley. Decided to sail a little slower, but less distance. How about Denmark? They were mired in ninth and tenth place over those first two legs, and here they are now moving up into fourth place. Yeah, I mean, it's story of the weekend, really. Sehested's doing a great job of sailing that boat fast around the course and overtaking boats. It's been the story. If you're at the back of the pack, can you work your way through the fleet? And this top of the course, Todd, up under the fans in Saint-Tropez, there's a lot less wind. Canada, they choose to turn early, and they've fallen off the foils. They're really slow. Canada are actually going left to right on our screen, but you can see the Germans in fifth have nearly caught them up. Rush decision by Robertson could have cost them some places. So Phil Robertson making his way back okay, down the course in fourth down, place. Keep Have keep a coming. look at that, Todd. Yeah. Look, that's a 200-meter gain for Ainsley. Yeah. Top of our screen on Great Britain. Bottom of our screen, oh, Canada. They went yeah. round together, yeah. but a huge yeah. loss for Canada. Yeah. And here we've got the wind speeds across the course. Currently, the British have the most breeze on the top of the screen. 17 to 20 kilometers now of pressure, while the Canadians have slightly less. Part of the reason why we saw them struggle to get back up on the foils after their incident at the top gate. Oh, this would be a huge win for Great Britain because they got a second in race number one, really fell back, got an eighth in race number two, and then finished off the day with a third in race number three yesterday. Here we go, Canada turned the boat. Second time they've turned on this downwind leg, and they've lost a lot of distance. Looks to me like Spain are well past them. Certainly our leaderboard suggesting Canada all the way back in fourth. They are, look at that, Denmark are up to third. Brilliant work for the Danish, and expect Great Britain to set up for a left turn and head back to that side of the course where they made their game before. Here they go, one last turn, and then they'll be heading up into the wind. So at gate number four, Sir Ben Ainsley and Emirates GBR decide to go to that more favored side of the course. They have the lead in second place, the winners of the last event in Los Angeles. Spain looking very good in second, Denmark looking fast, and here come the Canadians, look at the speed. Now, Canada dropping back was a huge gain for the Spanish team, as that currently gives them enough points to pip ahead of Australia into the final. Obviously, another race to come after this, this is big news for the Spanish team. Yeah, Stevie, I can't remember the last time we didn't have Australia in the event final. Well, Australia or New Zealand, of course. I mean, it's uh, potentially a big shake-up for the season here. And we can see now the Danish. They choose to turn away. Australia back in the picture, but he's going to need a good result. I think at this stage, it's worth mentioning why the boat's heading off in different directions. Well, they've got to zigzag their way up the wind. That's the boat won't go straight into the wind. Just try and make the Spanish life hard when we can. <laughs> Anna, there you go. Anna, the strategist, she's thinking about the overall points there. She'll have the results in her mind and she'll know that the Spanish are a threat for that final. They're the boat behind, so they make it hard. How do you make it hard? You try and block the wind to your boat behind you, because if you can give them disturbed, turbulent air, it's impossible to go as fast. Two-time Olympic gold medalist Hannah Mills, the strategist for Emirates GBR. Constantly feeding information to Ainsley. When she's talking about pressure, hey, she's no not talking about the pressure moment. they feel from the boats behind. She's talking about the wind and where you can find more wind. And this is interesting here. This is the Mark 1 to yeah, now position. Now, obviously, we expected go. GBR to do well. They had a good start, still in the it's lead. But look at the Danish. They were in eighth at Mark 1 and have moved all the way up to fourth. That's just shown how well they've sailed in this race. Head out of the boat and really looking for the puffs. Here we go. So they're just talking about the setup here, Todd. We're really nearly at the top of this fine lot wind leg. There's not a lot of manoeuvres left for the British, potentially just one more turn through the wind. And they're sailing this boat very fast. It's been a disappointing start to season four. We had the youngster Diego Portin winning in Los Angeles with the Spanish crew and potentially some of the, let's say, more experienced crew, such as Sir Ben Ainsley. He starts to look like he needs a result. That's great. 
Nice yep. maneuver there. The wind seems to be holding up. There you see the speed in green. They are at the perfect Pushing speed for Fully. It has to be over 30. They've come down just a little bit. And here comes Spain, hot on their heels. Just back on the foils. Have they judged it right? Can they make it down to this gate without turning again? So, Kenny Mills letting Ben Ainsley know no issues with any boats. They've got clear sailing. The epitome of it is they approach gate number five, and it looks like Emirates GBR is going to make it to the finish line and pick up a victory. Nice positioning there. They've done a good job of minimizing the maneuvers. They've always turned that boat really tight for making these upwind gates, but they've got round, and now they turn. It's just a little sprint to the finish. Constantly vigilant as they make their way in front of the Adrenaline Lounge. Race number one on Championship Sunday goes the way of Emirates GBR. Fans on the shore, there are plenty of fans watching, plenty of happy fans seeing that. Now Spain up in second place, they need a good finish here. Canada and Denmark are tight, Canada have the right of way there, but if Spain can get round that mark, which I think they can, they've fallen off the foils, but I think they're going to have enough lead to hang on to this second place. Looks calm on board the Spanish boat. And this could really put them in good stead to make the final. And Canada oh, totally sorry. playing yeah, the spoiler yeah. right now as they really don't have an opportunity to make it after those eight points deducted yesterday with here. a collision with the Spanish. Canada's going to take points Thanks, away man. from Thank Denmark. You. Denmark and Australia, crucially, and in ninth place, the USA. They were in a final position before this race. But also, Phil and the crew, don't forget, they're racing hard for season points. If they can claw back a few places, right. even if they only get out of this event in seventh, it will mean all the season points that they can get a crucial. But I'm just so hit out, I don't watch it. So Nikolai Sehested and I Denmark. Just, my, my mind was in boundaries from yesterday. Yeah, exactly. So, like, that was what, just, I was so close going out there Hello. with that mark. There you go, just talking about the race course and how tight they are to get in and around this course there. They're trying to trying to learn the course in this first race. They should understand the day a lot better for Tom Slingsby coming across the line there in fifth. Well, it's another, if we're honest, slightly average one. However, yeah, he right. will know he's right in the hunt. And of course, got to remember, Todd, all you've got to do is make that final three and you've got every shot of winning the event. And we've seen Tom Slingsby and the Australians come from behind before. Now the battle for sixth place. Look at the Germans coming on at full speed on the foils. The Swiss are going to try to insist this thing the line, and this is going to be close. Switzerland, do they have enough steam to get across the line before the Germans that are charging hard? And it does look like they'll just cross it. Seb Schneider and Nathan Outer to get it done. They claim six. Germany holds on for seven. Time finishing. It was interesting there, Nathan, talking about the start. A lot of the boats did look late on that start. Their yeah. timing was off, and talking about timing being off, France and USA, wow. they need big results, and this is big result in the wrong sense. And the USA holding on looks like they're going to have the speed to pass France in front of their home fans here, and they're going to pick up that extra point. So eighth may make a difference if they can get a big finish on the final race. So the Americans That's race in eighth. France holds on for ninth or dead last because New Zealand not racing today, damaged boat yesterday. Wow, I can't wait to see these results. Yeah. I've got a funny feeling that there could be uh, like six or seven teams with every chance of making it to the final. So this is going to be some race pressure of the day could well be on Emily Nagal looking after the results and trying to keep on top of the abacus to let us know where we're at. All right, let's go down on the water. This time we join Emirates GBR and their tactician, Hannah Mills, the two-time gold medalist. We like to refer to her as the Welsh GOAT, but she gets things done for Ben Ainsley and team. Hannah, if you can hear us, uh, congratulations. Great way to start Championship Sunday. Give us an idea of the conditions. We've heard terms like puffy and shifty. How was it for you guys today? Yeah, it's uh, definitely puffy and shifty, you know, really tricky racing, um, you know, it's hard to stay on the foils all the time through the manoeuvres, so yeah, it's, it's super challenging for everyone. And Ben, uh, we saw you, uh, all the boats were a little bit late for the start, has it been hard to adjust to these smaller wings out there today? Yeah, I think it is, it is different, I mean, we're lucky with this breeze coming in, it wasn't really forecast, but yeah, probably still downrange on, on this AP wing and a bit of a light spot as well in that pre-start, so not a, not a huge surprise to see a few people late. Like Hannah said, it's tricky when the wind's up and down so much. Getting it right is uh, far from easy, as you can see. Hannah, quick question for you before we let you go. How much do you look at the numbers and making life difficult for other people, like the Spanish, and knowing what you have to do to get in that <laughs> top three? 
uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely take a look at the numbers now. I mean, you've, you've got to be aware of, of what you've got to do in the last race to make the top three. So, yeah, we'll, we're about to check it out. All right, appreciate your time, Emirates, GBR, Sir Ben Ainsley and Hannah Mills. Spend a little bit of their time to talk with us and give us the breakdown on that first race. Race number four of Championship Sunday goes the way of the Brits. And a throwback here to the start that set up it all for the British team. So Australia highlighted they're heading towards that prime pole position. By going up that little bit on the line, they opened the gap for GBR. Now, while they went to the optimum position, they did have the opportunity to have a bit more space and come in with speed. Up at the top of the line, you do have the Spanish, who were quite far back at the line, 44 metres away. But the fastest boat, they managed to get some good speed and end up with a good result. Well, and that played out, of course, slightly faster angle for Canada into Mark 1, and they did a brilliant job of maximising the advantage of that. They slingshot round the outside of the British, but the story of the day for the British really was they did a fantastic job of minimising the distance that they sailed. Canada here, they came all the way to our yellow ley line. Ainsley saw the opportunity, though. He turned well before, probably saved himself about 100 metres on the Canadians there, leapfrogged them into the lead, and once you give Ben Ainsley the lead, well... You can perhaps try and force things, which Canada did, but that normally ends up badly for you. He fell off the foils, slowed down, and it was Great Britain that sailed away for the win. And let's look forward to that next race. One more fleet race to go before the event final, and this is how it shook down. Emirates GBR gets the victory and the 10 points. Spain picks up nine. Canada really not in contention for the event final. They pick up eight taking a point away from Rockwell. Denmark to finish in fourth. Australia, Switzerland, Germany really scratching their heads how that happened. And the USA may have just shot themselves in the foot. Beautiful day here in Saint-Tropez. It is day number two, Championship Sunday here at the France Sail Grand Prix. This is the third event of season four. Everyone scrambling to get maximum points. One more race still to go on the med. What a way to start. What a way to start Championship Sunday here in Saint-Tropez. We were wanting that win to come in, and thankfully it did just before racing. The teams have been up and foiling. So great news for all the fans here in Saint-Tropez and everyone tuning in wherever you are in the world. Sir Ben Ainsley, what an absolute legend he is on the water. We know that, but they have not been delivering. This team has struggled haven't won a race in a very, very long time. Haven't won an event, I should say, in a very, very long time. So the pressure really is, I think, now on that Emirates Great Britain team to see how they can deliver in this final race here in Saint-Tropez and if they can back that event win that they haven't had in such a, a long period of time. But for me, it was all on that start. Emirates Great Britain just launched off the line. They had a great battle there with Canada going head-to-head. -head. The Canadians snuck ahead of Right around, right in front of us. It was neck and neck. We couldn't call it here on the boat as to who was going to be ahead. And then they just had a battle right the way across the course. But it was Emirates Great Britain taking that race win. But wow, some serious disappointment out there on the race. In the background, the home team, wow, coming dead last at your home event. That is not what you want. So that team is going to have to bounce back somehow going into this final race of the day. Disappointment too for the USA team. Our defending champions here in Saint-Tropez. Jimmy Spittle said that he loves it here when we interviewed him yesterday. I don't know how he'll be feeling after that race today. But the good news is, for everyone watching, the breeze is here. It's here to say it's coming over as it has over that Saint-Tropez shoreline, which just makes it super difficult for these teams to call where the wind is. And as I say that right now, I'm feeling it. This is the biggest gust that we've had all day. So that's great news for these 24-metre all-purpose wings, slightly smaller than what we saw yesterday. So if this breeze keeps picking up, we're going to have good action for the final race of qualifying. Here we go. Event three of season four. This is the France Sail Grand Prix Saint Tropez. There you see the event leaderboard as it stands right now. A little bit of confusion there. New Zealand boat damage yesterday after, so they already accumulated 21 points, Stevie. So they're not in last, but they cannot accumulate any more points. GBR leads the way with 30. Denmark and Spain coming up in second, third. 
And if you're wondering what happened, this is what happened out on the water. We can report that everyone was safe and accounted for, but an absolute disaster for the Kiwis as they ended day number one in a tie for first place, but officially they cannot race today. It's incredibly disappointing we're not able to get out there today. Yeah, I think from us as a team, obviously the most important thing that is that everyone's safe. We obviously had a huge structural failure on a one design piece of equipment that was due to absolutely no fault of, of anyone within this group. So, yeah, I think the league's got to go back and have a, a really deep dive into what exactly happened, what exactly caused that. And also as a group, we're feeling really gutted that there aren't enough spares on site to, to be able to put the boat back together and get it back on the start line for today. So, yeah, it feels like um, an incredible bit of, of bad luck, but you know, also some massive disappointment in the fact that we and the SoGP League can't get us back out there on the start line today. I'm sure there's going to be a pretty thorough review going to exactly what's happened. Uh, you know, from our point of view, the, the wing had passed all its checks before we went sailing, so there was nothing out of the normal and we didn't notice anything out of the out of the ordinary during the whole day. And you know, when it actually failed was you know, when I would think it would be quite unloaded at that time. So it must have been something that was you know, building up during, during the day. And uh, we're um, yeah, obviously incredibly thankful for no one was hurt. Probably incredibly thankful we were a long way away from any other boats when it happened as well, because if it was, say, going down the first reach, it could have been a lot different. Yeah, it's at this stage we're really under a full investigation. I mean, we don't have any conclusions yet, but because of that, we're not using the 29 meter wings today. The great news is that no one's hurt. The wings have been salvaged, everything recovered from the water, and now it's really about getting New Zealand back and racing for Toronto. Best news is that everyone, as Stevie pointed out, is okay, but again, that forces the entire fleet to go to the smaller 24 meter wings. And the investigation will continue, and hopefully we'll get the Kiwis back in time for the next event in Toronto. We're two minutes and 20 seconds away from the next race. We now sit it down on the water, and the fourth member of our team, Olympic silver medalist Lisa Darmanin. Well, we can expect more of the same for race number five. It is super gusty out here. We've been talking about ships, but for me, it's all about pressure. It's about finding those pockets of pressure around the course. And if you fall in a hole, you can lose five or six places. So those strategists have a big job on their cards today. If anything, the wind has picked up slightly. The lulls are still big, but the gusts are bigger. We're seeing maybe 24 kilometer per hour puffs. So we should be in store for a fantastic another reaching start here in San Tropez. And Lisa, I've got to ask you about the massive gains. We saw that in uh, race number four with Denmark picking it up. Is that just luck of the draw or can you anticipate those massive gains and where they might be coming from from your reporting? You can certainly anticipate it, especially at that first turning gate, because you're away from the shore and you can see it coming. So it really is like a conveyor belt. If you get on that, it can shoot you up the course. So uh, big rewards out here for the teams that are getting it right. All right, thank you very much, Lisa. Down on the water, we'll come back to you in a moment as the race gets started in 110. And there you see, that is the battle. Top three moving on to the event final. Australia on a tie with Spain, but Australia would lose out on the tiebreaker as it stands right now. So 10 points for a win, one point for last place. And now everyone, Stevie, into the start box. And this is the most critical race so far. They're all critical, but this is the one for teams like the USA, teams that are on the bubble or close to it. And then the teams that are in the top two, they've got to hold on to that position. Yeah, I mean, Emirates GBR, they're in a good position here, but we wouldn't be at all surprised to see a little bit of a uh, little bit of tussle between Australia and Spain. They're well separated at the moment. We can see that pole position is the place to be, the blue triangle on the left-hand side of our screen there. But I think anywhere up the line is quite good. Australia and Great Britain are tight together. Denmark have been sailing well and Spain look well lined up for a good start here. It's now about timing and how fast can you hit the line. Here you go Canada. They turn the boat aggressively. Phil Robertson spinning the boat around on the Canadian boat here as they look to come in fast at the line. USA look a bit late to me but he's coming with a late run. Can the USA time this right? Five seconds to go to the start. Denmark and Australia out the middle of the line. Emirates Great Britain are back. 
It's now a fast sprint here. What timing from Jimmy Spindle on board USA, but can he hang on? He's got a slower angle to mark one for here. It's just straight line sailing across the breeze and Rockwell Demois, there they go. They speed her up and they're looking to roll over the top. Here we go, mark number one, the final fleet race of the day, and it is Denmark that holds on to that pole position. The USA tucks into second place with Australia off the right. USA pull it out when they need to. Australia crucially are ahead of Spain, but at the moment, Emirates Great Britain's got some work to do. They're in the pack. These points are going to be tight, so the next few manoeuvres into gate two are crucial as Denmark, they've stretched away and they set things up nicely. First to turn towards gate two, and we know the crews are going to want to try and simplify this and get themselves straight round with a left turn. Are going to get more, Breeze? with left turn? So nice if the breeze and Mother Nature cooperate today. A penalty, it looks like a boundary penalty for Australia. That could be huge. They'll have to drop back just a little bit. But what a start for Jimmy Spindle and USA Sail GP when they needed it most. Well, they really did need it, Todd. That's heady. All right, I'm going to settle it down here. Be calm on board, Sir Hester. There you go, yeah. Settle it down a bit. That's probably a good mode. Now you're out in front. You've got a bit of space. Let's get that tempo down and start sailing the boat smooth and fast, which they've done a great job of all weekend. But it's tight in the pack. USA look like they're going to be able to get round left turn, but Australia first to move away. He's looking for space on the race course. And it's all going off in this race to the final. Currently, as it stands, the Danish, British and Aussies would be going through but the USA is only one point Ooh. behind Australia, so if they could get ahead here, or, or, or if Australia right lose now, the place. Right now, Lee, i got to imagine Lee, that the USA is big fans of Spain, and they would love to see Diego Botin overtake Tom Slingsby and knock them back a point. Early stages of the rate, we could see boats starting to get very slow at gate two. It's going to be halfway up this upwind leg that we'll get a better feel of the course here. What Tom Slingsby on board Australia has done well is find some space. He's in clear wind, but as we see our ladder lines on the course here, we can see that on the top of our screen, the right hand side of our race course, Denmark, nearly 200 meters further pressed up the course and a bit of a gain for them. So before we have our first crossing here on leg number three and race number five, let's go down on the water. Lisa Darmel and look at your crystal ball. Whose position do you like best with the conditions that you're seeing down there? Denmark have picked this perfectly. They've been bold all, all weekend, and we know that right side is working, so they're looking really strong. But the battle is between Spain and Australia. Australia are not giving them any space because they know what is at stake here. And the Australians right on cue overtake the Americans for that second position. So that's going to make life difficult for Jimmy Spithill and USA Sail GP as they drop back to third desperately in need of points. They're going to need to get past Denmark and Australia and then have Spain maybe help them out as well. Sorry, I went to really, really tight here. What I noticed there was Great Britain have done a nice job of finding some space. They've moved up to fifth, which will be good news for them as we're on board Australia here. Tight moment in the pre-start there. That was a big, aggressive luff from the British, but Slingsby responded quick enough, got away. No love lost there. Here we are on board the front of the British boat. We can see now Australia must keep clear. Right, like that. Yep, like that. Dangerous Australia penalty. Oh, pretty clear instructions from Ben Ainsley to the umpires there as to what he thought was happening, or should be happening more like. But now, look at this. The wind has got a little bit light on the top of our screen. Australia, they've closed right up behind Denmark, but the USA, they do not have the right of way in this situation, but they're coming in fast and have made some gains. Britain, they look slow. There's not a lot of wind where Great Britain are at the moment. It's definitely light up under the fans on the shoreline. Gate number three in the final fleet race, and then the top three are going on to the event final. Australia, they opt for that right-hand side where they just came from. Denmark goes to the other side. It looks like Spain. What are they going to do? Are they going to follow the Americans? Are they going to follow the Danes? They're going to follow the Danes. The Danes, Elise has been saying, this decision up here is crucial. These next few seconds, whether or not you find wind, could be so important. And Eric Heil on board the German boat, he looks set to play spoiler as he's closed up on the British, still behind them, but could well end up with a split at the top of the course. It's going to be about who finds more wind. And at the moment, Sehested, bottom right-hand corner of our screen, the Danish boat turns, but they're moving away nicely. You go all the way back, Stevie, to practice day on Friday. The Danes have just looked so consistent. And just shown right here, race the final. Danish still leading the charge. Australian GBR tied on points in second and third. 
and yeah, Spanish and here, dropping a little bit further back. They're going to be pushing hard here to close that gap and hopefully gain a point. Well, the Spanish TV might not make the final, but this is a good follow-up from their win in Los Angeles. It wasn't just a fluke. Well, they've set well all season. They're second overall in the season standing as we talk, and they've yeah, put together a brilliant performance. Very young, talented team. They've got a lot of work to do here. They're probably relying on a mistake from the British to have any hope. Big dip behind there by Rockwall Denmark, and they've got to watch out for Jimmy Spittle now. Denmark don't have the right of way. That's a tight moment in the race there. Really tight moment. Now, Spain, they need to overtake those two boats in front of them, and they're going to be an awful lot closer than they were. Nervous times for Ben Ainsley on board Great Britain, but he's stalking the Spanish boat at the moment, chasing them down. And once again, Tom Slingsby in Australia pulling an absolute Houdini after the last race looking terrible, finishing a fifth again, and he somehow is finding his way, Emily, into that top three. We've seen the Australians sailing well all week. Yesterday, we saw them as one of the fastest boats on the upwind legs. They're also one of the best at manoeuvring. Same with the Danish. They're both gaining a lot of distance in these manoeuvres, while other teams less so. Not sure you get his heart rate up until he's properly nervous before these last couple of races. Anyway, he's not an operating temperature, Todd. And while we talk about the Australians, how they find a way to get to the front, Spain looking good, Emirates GBR looking good, Denmark's been consistent, Stevie. I hate to do it, but France on their home waters, they have just looked awesome. Yeah, well, we talked about the big thing in that, that position swap. You know, they're back in ninth. They've swapped one of their back three, which I think the, both the boats that have swapped their back three, you know, the driver, the right. flight controller, or the wing trimmer, Switzerland and France, they're both struggling in these tricky, gusty conditions, and it is a huge change to make. They're the Americans as they move past on that position. They pick up a spot into third now, so they're two points out of making the top three. All this depends on really three boats. What Spain, Denmark, and the USA could pull off here on this final upwind leg. It's really tight at the moment. The Spanish have done a fantastic job of getting their way through here. Up into second place at the moment. Denmark slightly worrying for them ahead of a final, a probable final, is the fact they've dropped from first back to fifth. You kind of expect the leading boat historically has stretched away. Denmark won't be happy that they've got themselves caught up in the middle of the pack again. As we can see, Emirates Great Britain showing in third at the moment. They'll like what they see if that happens. But right now, they've got to watch out for the boats coming back from the top of our screen. They have the right of way, but the ladder lines suggest that Great Britain are further up the course. Nice gains for Spain, nice gains for Great Britain at the moment. Aggressive from Australia. Look at that. He turns his boat directly on top of the wind for Spain and Australia, trying to block the wind to them, trying to slow them down, but ultimately trying to stay in the same patch of water as his rivals as we see Great Britain have to dip behind Jimmy Spittle's USA. So the Americans still in the fight, holding down third right now. It's Australia and Spain leading the way. Great Britain has moved into fourth. They look to be safe after that tremendous performance on the first race today where they got the win. Hannah Mills tell us, you know, make life a little more difficult for Spain. You know they've crunched the numbers, Stevie. They knew exactly what they needed in this last race. Yeah, she definitely will have. Look, all oh, the Spanish backhand side of our screen there. We just did a poor turn, fell off the foils. That could be a big moment for them. They've got to accelerate that Spanish boat. They're up over 30, should be foiling. On a match, that means they just want to try and stay directly on the wind, directly in front of the Spanish and slow them up. But the battle here is for Denmark. Exactly, Stevie. Right now, with Spain in second and Denmark in fifth, that would actually see the Spanish leapfrog and end up into the final. So all the pressure right now is on the, the Danish yeah. overtaking. There we go. See, bottom left-hand corner there. Spain and Denmark 34, but it's important to remember that whoever finishes ahead of whoever, ahead of whoever the last in the last race, race will win a tie-break. So Denmark, this could be disaster if they can't make one more game. They've sailed so well all weekend, so well at the beginning of this race, but just one... One light, slight slip, one slightly slow leg, and they're now under a lot of pressure. And it looks like Tom Slingsby has done enough. Remember yesterday, they won race number two. They backed it up with an eighth in race number three, so they've been up and down all over the table this weekend. But when it counted most, race number five, the three-time reigning and defending champions, the Aussies, come to race five in Saint-Tropez and pick up a win. 
and it could be crucial. We just saw the USA had lost a few positions. I think Denmark are through. They could even jump ahead of the British here. Denmark has the right of way at the mark. He can slow the British up if he wants to. He's going to try and make it hard here. What does the Danish need to do? I think he just needs to finish fourth. He's oh, he's taking him. Here we go. He's pushing the British off. Not enough, though. Ainsley keeps the boat flowing. Ainsley's boat will foil first. Emirates Great Britain from here. They should be able to get up on the foils and lead in third place. But it's tight to the finish. And Denmark, oh, my word, if Germany can get Denmark, that could be crucial for Denmark. That could be it. That could have been a huge mistake by the Danish to try and hunt the British. I think if they'd finished fourth, it would have been enough. Emirates GBR with just enough speed as they cross the line in third place, and it is Germany that grabs oh, fourth Eric place. Isle as the spoiler as well, and a fourth Denmark. That's disaster, I think. I think. I didn't do great at school. <laughs> I think that's enough to mean Denmark might lose that another Spain point. are going to be on the tie break, and at the last mark, Denmark. Oh no, this is disastrous. Yeah, this is so painful for the Danish fans. And this place is hard to say that. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Understatement of the day. This place is hard to oh, sail at as Denmark was locked into the top three and they just drop anchor on the final leg to fall out of the top three. I don't think he had to try and hunt the British. Fourth was enough though, Todd. Oh. They did not crunch the numbers well enough. Disaster for Denmark. So Canada comes across the line in eight. This will be a definitely forgettable event for them after the eight-point deduction with the collision with Spain. France having to retire mid-race. Stevie, this has just been the worst for them. After so much momentum coming into the season, anticipation, they make the change at flight controller. It did not work out. Well, it doesn't seem to have worked very well at all, to be perfectly honest with you. They, they've been down on performance yesterday. We saw some real high moments. They were fast downwind, so it's not all negative. But ultimately, the scoreboard doesn't lie, so they're going to be pretty disappointed right now. So the fleet races are complete here on Championship Sunday, and the top three are moving on to the event final. Let's reveal who's going on. It will be Emirates, Great Britain. What a great second day, a first and a third. Australia somehow finds a way again to get themselves into the top three. And then it's Spain just barely edging out the days by one point. Back-to-back -back second places puts the Gajos into the final. Well, we go down on the water. Nikolai Sehested. Nikolai, you guys had such a great first day, and you started things off well on day number two, finishing fourth in race number four. That had to be frustrating, watching that final leg play out the way it did. Yeah, uh, very painful. Um, we didn't uh, we didn't sell well here in the last race. We just uh, sailed our way through the fleet, so um, yeah, painful, but uh, sailed good enough, so uh, that's the way it is. And Nikolai, uh, feels pretty harsh to ask you now, but um, you know, what, what are the priorities on that course? You, you have sailed a great weekend here, obviously disappointed, but what, looking ahead to the final, what, what do you think is the priority for it? Oh, it's all about just being in phase uh, with the shifts, and um, yeah, we got a bit out of phase here in the last race, and. Uh, a little bit caught up in other boats, so if you can avoid, yeah, avoid other boats, which is easy in the final, and it's just about being in the face with the breeze. It's a big ride is coming, so you need to get to them. Nikolai, in your mind, when you came to that last gate and you saw the finish line and you saw Emirates GBR coming in, did you feel like you needed to be ahead of them to get that extra point to get into the final, or were you just more concerned about positioning? Uh, I think we needed to be ahead of them, so that's why we, uh, okay. we went pretty hard after them. Um, yeah. Up, All right, Nikolai, we appreciate your time. Great showing by Rockwell Denmark, and we will see you in Italy. Well, a tough break for Rockwell Denmark. Sail GP, Stevie, they had it, then they lost it, then they got it back. But when it came down to the final leg, Denmark comes up just a point short of making it in to the event final. But they were consistent all weekend long here at the France Sail Grand Prix in Saint-Tropez. Well, yeah, I mean, it was a tough one for Denmark, but it came down to such fine details, and Australia 
They know how to put it out the back when it matters. They were so tight, but it came down to a very, very good maneuver at the top of the course. Traditionally, less wind in that top of our screen there under the shoreline, but Australia, well, they still managed to get the boat foiling quickly, and it was that kind of detail that mattered. They pulled themselves from a position in the pack to the lead, and, well, we've seen it season after season that if you give the Australians clear wind, if you give them a lead, they will just sail away, and I think that's going to be the takeaway for Denmark mark from this event because they did have the lead but they couldn't hold on to it and well dejection for Denmark elation for Australia a nice look here now at the numbers it's really interesting looking at the two different modes sailed by our lead boats the Aussies sailed the fastest 48 kilometers an hour versus the Spanish's slightly slower speed but the Aussies sailed a lot more distance and did 12 maneuvers compared to Spain's nine now yesterday we saw that less maneuvers was the key to winning well, today, it wasn't so. It was a lot more about staying up on the foils as much as possible and sailing to the right area of the course, even if that meant an extra maneuver. Well, it's always about the details, isn't it? And, and, you know, if you do them well, if you do the maneuvers well, they don't hurt you as much. And in this pre-start, it was tight again, but the timing of the fleet back was a lot better, but it was that bunch in the middle that had the drama. Denmark, Australia and Great Britain. Well, it was Denmark that won the fight here, did a fantastic job with their positioning. USA did come through on a charge late. Jimmy Spittill put the, all his money on red, timed it well, but it was Denmark won the start, but they just couldn't convert that into the result they needed for the rest of the race. So five fleet races up, five results down, and they were all over the board. You had Australia winning, Great Britain winning, USA winning, New Zealand winning, but it was the Aussies that picked up two victories out of five, and they have punched their ticket into the final alongside of Emirates GBR and Spain. Well, CV, Emily, we've seen it before. Just when you think Tom Slingsby and his crew just aren't having a good one, it's going to maybe not make the event final, take this one off, they find a way to get in. Somehow they find a way to get in. They do, and I love this camera angle here because you can see the dark little patches of wind moving down the course. They're the gusts we're talking about. Mainly in that middle part of our screen, we can see some darker patches of wind, and that's opportunity, Todd. So for someone like Tom Slingsby, even if he is in the patch, he knows he can find a gust of wind, can find space, get himself back in the race. Well, beautiful day here in San Tropez as we bring a close to this event, and it has been special. Coming into this, a lot of people thought there wouldn't be enough wind. Not the case. Mother Nature delivered in this beautiful part of the world, an iconic sailing venue. And there they are, Emirates, Great Britain. Wow, what a day here on Championship Sunday for Sir Ben Ainsley and that Emirates Great Britain team. Did it before that last race. They put themselves in a good position and they needed to deliver to get into this three-boat final and that's exactly what they did. I talked to Ben earlier in the week and I said, what's going on with the team? You didn't have a good the moment we know the boat's fast we know we've got a great team and finally we're seeing them deliver for the first time in what feels like an absolute age but let's not forget about the other boats in the final that spanish team in behind emirates great britain right now the youngest team that we've got in sail gp we just went past the spanish before as well diego botin the driver he had a massive smile on his face and why not this is the team that were the winners in la people were calling this thing a fluke the biggest upset in sail gp history but then the spanish team march on in to their second straight final that's no fluke to me this is a young spanish team that's hungry to win and they are delivering out here in one of the hardest environments in sailing and We'll finish it off. The third team in the final, no surprises there. It's the Flying Ruse, Tom Slingsby and the Australians just sailing like they've never sailed before here in Saint-Tropez. Tom Slingsby said that they've got a curse here in Saint-Tropez. I asked him yesterday, is the curse broken? He said, no, we'll have to wait to see till tomorrow. And I think officially the Australian Saint-Tropez curse is over now this is it the stage is set three great teams emirates gbr the spanish and the australians going head to head in this winner takes all final the breeze is up 
It's holding. It's going to be exciting. This is the trickiest race course we've seen in a long time here in Sale GP. You can make risks. You can make these big, bold decisions. And I'm looking forward to this next one. It's going to be a goodie. Enjoy. Championship Sunday here in Saint-Tropez. This is the France Sail Grand Prix. Todd Harris, Stevie Morrison, Emily Nagel, and Lisa Darman with you as we bring the curtain down on the France Sail Grand Prix. What a day of racing. Only the event final left to be contested. Beautiful conditions on the Mediterranean for the final day of the France Sail Grand Prix in Saint-Tropez. It will be Emirates, GBR, Australia, and Spain battling it out. Emily, who would have thought? I mean, surprisingly, Emirates, GBR, not so much. Australia, not so much. But Spain making it two for two on making event finals. I think it's incredible. You know, Spain are clearly have some momentum behind them. They're on a roll. They're coming into this final now as you know, defending event champion right. up against season uh, champion versus the greatest Olympic sailors of all right. time. So I think we're set for a pretty epic final. It was no fluke in Los Angeles, Steve. You've talked about this team is young. They are hungry. They are ready to go. Well, yeah, and I, we talk about a surprise. Uh, to be honest, my biggest surprise almost is Great Britain. They've not, Emirates GBR haven't been in the final for a long time. We started to question, has Ben Ainsley still got it? If that's something that you can actually say in public, right. which I think I've just done. But, you know, he, <laughs> he, you know he, they haven't performed the British. So actually, this could be the rebirth for this Emirates Great Britain. It's a, I'd say the biggest pressure is on them. They need to win this final more than the other two teams. Pressure on Ainsley and Mills and co here but as you mentioned they've done it plenty of times in their career and they'll be looking forward to it they're sailing very well today can they sail very well in this final well we're hearing the conditions will be very similar to what we just saw so a quick debrief for those three teams and then they will be back on the water battling it out this will be for the event championship winning the France Sail Grand Prix here in Saint-Tropez and the points that go along with it for the overall season championship so it's three heavy hitters ready to do battle on the Mediterranean. The newcomer, Diego Botin, not a lot of numbers to the right side of his re resume, Stevie, but he was thrown into this one because the team and everyone involved with uh, Spain and Sail GP, pretty confident in his abilities. Well, and we've seen on a world stage he can perform. He's performed in Sail GP. He's going to be happy to go again. So Spain in the event final for the second event in a row. Tom Slingsby, Emily, he's won it all. He's seen it all. He's, he's been there. Exactly. He knows what he's doing when it comes to a final, and we know a lot of teams are a bit nervous going up against him because when he's got space, he's quick. And it's amazing, Stevie, that the Emirates GBR boat gets around the course the way it does with all the hardware from the Olympics <laughs> that they have on board between, what, the seven or eight medals between Ben Ainsley and uh, Hannah Mills. Yeah, and they arrived on Sail GP with a bang, didn't they? They came in and they won straight off the bat, but it's a long time between meals for Ben Ainsley. And uh, he's looked pretty hungry out there today, so I'm sure they're going to be very, very keen to get a performance. As I say, this team, I believe, needs to win this event the most. They've got to show everyone else they're still there, still fighting, and still amongst the best. So now just moments away from the event final here as Spain once again is in the event final. And they are just going through final preparations before they will get themselves into position in the start box. We're able to go on board now with Diego Botin, the driver for Spain Sail GP. Diego, congratulations. Well done. Again, second event row. You're in the event final. What did you learn in Los Angeles that you can carry over here in San Tropez? Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, we are super pumped to be in another final. Uh, we are trying to uh, see what, what's important to do now. The conditions are very different to LA, and yeah, uh, now it's completely boiling, and yeah, we'll give, we'll give our best and see what happens. Diego, you seem to find some uh, extra speed in that second race today. It looked like you'd found maybe a slightly faster setting for the boat. What's the secret? Yeah. To be honest, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't think we are faster. I think the I think the, the Aussies have very good technique, but we got a very good path on the after right bottom turn on the turn on the second upwind, and yeah, uh, we got quite nice games there. 
Diego, be honest with me now. If we take you back to day one, race number one, when you had that slight little get together with Canada, did you ever think you guys would be in the final racing against Great Britain and Australia? Yeah, I mean, uh, after yesterday, we knew we, we had chances, but to be super honest, uh, yeah, another quite unexpected one. So, yeah, super pumped, and we're gonna we're gonna try to take the chance. And a lot of these final races, Diego, we've seen how important it is to be first at Mark 1. Do you think that is the most important thing today, or is it a little bit different with these gusty conditions? Yeah, I think uh, being first in Mark 1 is, is very important, but I also think that with these gusty conditions, everything, anything can happen. Uh, yeah, big losses and big gains can, can be made, so, yeah, we need to... That's, it's not going to end until the finish, so yeah, full focus until the end. Thanks, Diego. Well, go and get yourself ready. We look forward to seeing you racing. Good luck, mate. So Diego Botin, the driver for Spain, Sail GP, into the final for the second event in a row. Can they make it two for two? And that would really put the pressure on the rest of the fleet, Stevie. And, you know, we didn't question that win in Los Angeles, but we were wondering if they could back it up, and they've answered that question. More than answered it. They're saying very well, and I think, you know, we've seen all season they've, they've been performing well. They've, that win was a huge monkey off their back. And, yeah, now it's another chance to lay down a real marker here, and it's really that whole battle of age against, you know, yeah. age and experience against youth and enthusiasm. So it's going to be fantastic to see how it does play out because with Australia and Great Britain in the final, it's not going to be an easy one. The heavy hitters and Spain ready to do battle on the Mediterranean. The three-time reigning and defending champions, Australia. They are set and once again in familiar waters in an event final, Tom Slingsby and company. Tom, you've had some up and down results this weekend in France, uh, a couple that you usually aren't used to being at the bottom of the table and mixing a few fives, but when the time came, you guys delivered on that last race. Did you know it was going to come down to race number five that you'd have to be in that top two or three position to get into the final? Yeah, we did know it was going to come down to that final race, just how close the points were um, after the three races yesterday. The top six were separated by two points, so we knew that um, the last race was going to be really important. Uh, yeah, the guys did an amazing job. We, uh, we had plenty on. It was high fever, but everyone performed and uh, executed really well, so I'm really proud of the group. Yeah, it was a good, good performance, a good comeback in that race again. And Diego said he thinks you're the fastest boat out there. So do you feel this environment of the final should suit you more than that fleet racing situation? Very, very kind of Diego. But <laughs> honestly, it is so patchy out here. Uh, yeah, look, you, you get a gust and you just get ripping. And when you find the holes, the amount of times I've been stuck up in a hole on, at the top mark at this venue is unbelievable. I think I've got the record for that. So, um, <laughs> look, when we're in breeze and going well, we're, uh, we're, we're confident, we feel we back ourselves. But uh, that top mark is danger zone. It's got danger written all over it. And even if you've got a nice lead, getting out of there is not simple. So, uh, yeah, keep your eyes on that spot. Hey, Tom, we got to ask you before we cut you loose after this one, the difference between going from the 29-meter wing yesterday and then you make the drastic change to the 24 in almost identical conditions. Yeah, the 24-meter uh, the wing is, is a lot nicer. Um, I understand why they go the 29-meter wing because it, uh, it guarantees us sort of plenty of power if the wind does die out. But we've got great breeze here, and the 24-meter wing is, is a lot nicer to sail. Boats are ripping, uh, maneuvers are a bit easier. And, uh, yeah, we're in the right configuration for this race course. All right, Tom, appreciate your time. Once again, good luck to you in the event final. That's Australia's Tom Slingsby, the three-time reigning and defending champions. They are set to go and try to pick up more points as they are currently the overall leaders after two events by one point clear of Spain and Rockwell Denmark sitting in second place. We'll still go back on the water and Lisa Darmanin for her report before we get to that event final. Well, Ben, congratulations for making the final. What is going to be key of this is this shifty final race? Well, as always, the start's going to be massive. If you can get out ahead and then uh, read this this breeze, it, like you said, it's shifting around a lot. So you saw the previous two races, it's a little bit of a game of snakes and ladders, but our team are doing a good job sailing the boat nicely. So we'll first thing, try and get off that star line in good shape. Can you protect the other boats or is it about sailing your own race and the pressure you see? It gets harder. The shifter it gets like this, it's really hard to control another boat. And sometimes you just end up losing, losing more distance and sailing your own race and working the shifts. So 
we just have to figure that out. Anna's doing a great job helping on the strategy tools, and yeah, we'll just keep more of the same. Yeah, a, a good first start, rough second start. What's going to be the key this one? Well, the lineup. You know, we had a bad lineup in that second start. We got a bit rushed where we were with some of the other boats. We like to have a bit more space. So, of course, that'll be easier with three boats. But trying to figure out what the wind's going to be doing coming off that line. Do you want to be to leeward or do you want to be to windward? And that's a tough call to make, but it'll, it'll be one that happens at the last minute. Well, we better let you get into it. Thanks for your time. OK, cheers. Thanks. Go boat team, Tom Slingsby, Ben Ainsley for giving us that time. Where else do you get to talk to the drivers yes. right before the event final? Down on the water, hands on the wheel as they get set to go racing. It was fantastic. We're going to go back down on the water. Lisa Darmanin, give us your pre-race report, what you're seeing and what do you anticipate? Australia. Well, we're seeing a very similar thing to last race. It's super gusty out here. There's lots of danger zones. So even though a boat might be out in front, we know that they are not safe. But it is getting pretty gusty out here, and I'm lucky enough to be joined now by wing trimmer Blair Chuk. Blair, I know you'd be rather sailing than sitting here with me, but what do you think we've got in store for this final? Yeah, this is certainly a pretty tough perspective for me to um, view the racing from. Uh, but like you say, the, the wind's really patchy. It's actually just pulsing right now as we, we see it. Um, so, yeah, boats are on the right configuration. I really think it's going to be the team that gets off the start line fastest with, you know, when it comes down to three-boat final, you really want to be the team that, that's going the fastest right of the gun and then leading to mark one. Um, and from there, just trying to stay in the, in the pressure. It's, it's so up and down, as you heard the skippers say just before, so it's that team that manages it um, from there on in. And lining up for, for that start, is it a lot uh, easier than a general fleet start wind, because yeah. there's just way more space? That's yeah, I think it is. Some teams suit it better. You know, um, our starting technique last um, season really lent towards that. And you, you'll see um, some of these teams might go for more of a run-up. Um, some might come for a, a little bit more conventional, but there's definitely less um, boats to manage. So it's just more on the time and distance for, the, for that boat on the start line. We'll, we'll hand it back to the guys to take us through and see who does that run-up start. Yeah, look forward to it. All right, thank you, Lisa. We'll get set now as we come up on 90 seconds to go before the start of the race. First, we've got Spain. Emily, they are talented indeed. Yeah, we've got a really young, talented team. We've got the same lineup as we did in LA. That's Diego, Yol, Florian, Nicole, Yon, and Bernardo. So, a really strong team, all young and super enthusiastic. And how about the Aussies, Stevie? Well, I think if you've watched Sail GP, you know the crew on this yeah. boat. This is probably, uh, you know, one of the most well-known and experienced crews on the boat. I think big pressure on Tash Bryant to have her head out of the boat and big pressure on the wing trimmer, Carl Langford. I mean, Blair didn't allude to it, but I think that how well you trim the wing through these changeable conditions is also a hard job today. And, of course, Emirates GBR looking for that big win here, Stevie. They have got so much experience, so much talent on this boat. you got to think eventually it's all going to click and they're going to just drive away. Yeah, they're definitely sailing a lot better here today. And I think, again, Hannah Mills at the back of the boat. I can't help thinking those strategists have got a big job on to help the drivers see where the breeze is. As we see 40 seconds to go and they're already in position. Ainsley talking about did he want to be down the line near the bottom of our screen or up the line where you're going to have a faster angle. At the moment, Ainsley has a pretty good controlling position. Position on Emirates, Great Britain, yeah. that's a lot of water on the boat there with 27 yeah, yeah. seconds to go. He's defending Take against the ruse. Slingsby oh, pushing. Oh, Emirates, seven. Great Britain Great defending, and it's going to be Spain with the clear oh, runner. Oh, Australia oh, very oh, aggressive oh, from Slingsby oh, here. He's going to look to park the British boat. As soon as those boats overlap, if they do, the British will have to keep clear. It's really, really tight. Has Ainsley timed it right? The Australians can't hook them. Ainsley looks early back to the line here. It's aggressive match racing, racing. Watch for the line to turn white. Oh, that was so, so tight on the gun, and the Spanish are late. The Spanish late at the top of the line, will have a faster angle, looks like a clear start, and Slingsby's aggression's paid for him. The British are going to struggle to get over the top from here. At mark one, it should be the ruse in first place. Well, they couldn't get the hook in, but at mark number one, it is Australia that has the whole, whole shot position. What a maneuver by Tom Slingsby as he pushes the Brits to the outside. Here comes Spain back in the mix. Yeah, nice little move from the Australians there. He turned the British up a bit closer to the wind. That's brought the Spanish back into the race. But first decision goes to Great Britain. They spin away. He thinks he's seen win first. Spain try to follow. Everyone moving very quickly, trying to react to the changeable wind conditions. Currently seeing the highest speeds of any race so far this weekend. GBR doing over 60 kilometers an hour downwind here. Spanish closing the gap now from behind 65s. 
it's going to be a tight race. Find out now about how many manoeuvres can they do into the gate. Australia looked pretty well set for a left turn, but if Great Britain can make it down, they'll have the right of way on the inside. It's going to get really tight at the bottom. When Great Britain turn, Australia have got to watch out because the British will have the right of way. And they got to watch out for those super yachts. The fans, look how close they are to gate number two. Prime viewing condition, and it looks like Australia at gate two is going to opt for the left side of the course and great britain at the last second decides to follow with spain sitting at third that's great news for the australians they'll be so happy to see the boats follow around behind them they're going to be faster because they had to do no maneuvers great britain had to do two maneuvers late on and look at that spain are off the foils and then we see on our ladder lines here things are already extending away and if we can get down the water to lisa and blair and see whether they like the side of the course that australia are going to good pressure out of this yeah well, Wright has been working all day, but I think Australia's going to be pretty happy where they are. They can basically stay between the mark and, and the other boats. Blair, would you be pretty happy for Australia right now? Yeah, that was a pretty strong start. They uh, executed their first leg really well and um, going the right way, and they've got them covered right now. So it's going to be a tough uh, road back, for, uh, especially for the Spanish from here, but uh, I think even for GBR, it's, Aussie have really got a hold on this one. The British boat were looking really strong, but they had a big wobble on that downwind, and that, and that almost cost them the race. Yeah, that, that really did. They pushed a little bit too hard there. I think they did the right thing driving before Australia, but, um, yeah, I think Parker might have pushed a little bit hard there, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough, tough road back from here. Tough road back, but I remember the grand final last year saying that the New Zealand boat was out of it and they got to back within five metres. So I think there's plenty of race left here. As we come up towards the Saint Tropez shoreline, Tom Slingsby said how nervous he was of that gate three right. where there's less wind, it's gusty, it's shifty. That's where the opportunities are going to come. Of course, you'd rather be in first place right now, and we can see already Australia in a match race just trying to stay between himself and the other boats. And all of these manoeuvres are crucial. Right now, Australia are the fastest boat by two kilometers an hour but it's that foiling percentage that is critical so far in all of the maneuvers the aussies have kept up on the foils the most they've accelerated the quickest out of it and right now sailing almost straight up the ladder line it shows how shifty the wind is and doesn't it they just managed to almost sail straight up the course the winds turned back and they faced away but expect a maneuver from australia soon as they're on that yellow line the ley line that's the line that says they'll make it to the next gate with no more maneuvers if they can stay on the foils for the next 30 seconds in and out of this gate i think they'll be well set we're halfway through the race but this is probably the pinch moment in the race Focus here. Yep. Look at Great Britain. They are making gains here as they pick up the speed much cleaner now. They're going to both head to the same side of the course. It looks like it at the moment. And there you go. They've done a great job of this all day, Great Britain, minimizing distance. We can see there the extra distance that the Australians have sailed. They've done that to guarantee safety. But what they've also done is lose a lot of lead to the British. They still have control. But it's now a pure match race between first and second, as I think the Spanish have got a lot to do now. So what was nearly a 200 meter lead is now shrunk down to about 100 as Emirates GBR has closed the gap. Just three seconds behind at the last gate, they decide to turn away first. Yeah, they move away first, but we could see there, there was a real dark patch of water right next to the Australian boat. I think the Australians have done a nice job of staying in good breeze. And there we go, we heard Carl Langford sailing into really good pressure. Look how high they are out the water and they look well lined up to gate two. Great comms from Kyle Langford there. He's talking about the wind dropping as they come down towards this next gate. So the crucial thing now is can they get through gate four with no more manoeuvres or not? And here we go. We heard Tom Slingsby. We're going to go right. There's going to be one more manoeuvre from Australia here. They're going to turn the boat and head out to a right turn. Looks like they've made a gain, though, at this point. OK, hold that, hold that. Holding, hold. And they're coming up. Coming up. Yeah, Cash Bryan steering really accurately out of the jive there. And once again, Australia, he's happy to sail a little bit of extra distance to set himself up well for the next leg. But they're high. They got a little bit too high there. They skidded sideways. Good save by Jason Waterhouse. Australians are fast, but I think we've got a split. It's one of the things we've seen over this weekend. All of the flight controllers are really pushing that ride height. Yesterday, the French led the way with the highest boat. Today, it's the Australians. Go. We've got a split, Todd. Lisa, Blair, what can you see on the water? Is this a game for Great Britain or have Australia called it right? Yeah, 
outweigh by different angles. Australia are looking pretty strong for, from my eyes, Blair. What are you thinking? Yeah, I think Great Britain did well to get the split at the bottom. That's what you want. But, um, yeah, to me, the Aussies are in that pressure nicely. They're coming across to the right-hand side of the racetrack looking up, and uh, I think you'll see attack in 10 seconds or something, and they'll have them pretty well covered. We're going to be slow here. Stand by. Get the build on tight moment there as we can see the wind has turned to favor the British it is tight but this is the moment Blair was talking about will the Australians Here be able to block the breeze of the British Australia turn Great Britain's foiling faster than the Australians can they come alongside if they can get overlapped alongside the Australians are going to have to keep clear here we go Australia have got to get out of the way crucial moment here it's going to be a protest from Ainsley look at him Oh, there's no drama with the acting skills there from Ainsley. What a moment. Brilliant move. He's got the wind blocked. Side by side drag race as Ainsley calls it, and here comes the penalty. There was the penalty, but it's instantly scratched as the British take the lead. But crucially, we've got now one more manoeuvre for the British. Look at that, Ainsley points out the breeze. It's all about this next manoeuvre. Australia, Australia turn turns, away. here we go. So it is all on here in the penultimate leg. It is this leg and then a right hand turn to the finish line and the championship will be decided. Great Britain in the final leg as they approach this upwind, puts on the afterburners and gets past Australia. What a move. And critically there, in their final manoeuvre, they did stay up on the foils. The Aussies dropped off and lost a little more distance. Well, we said the pressure was on, but if they can make this final right turn, it's going to be theirs. They've got a nice lead. Pressure's on. Todd, but they've delivered. Absolutely stood and delivered at the most critical time as Sir Ben Ainsley, Hannah Mills, the rest of the crew delivered a masterful performance just when you thought they were out. Emirates GBR comes sailing back and they pass the flying ruse. Give the win to Emirates GBR in Central Bay. Turns out they've still got it, Todd. Yep. Awesome work. Well, wow, there you go. Ben Ainsley Saving said it well. Saving the best for last, Stevie, out of nowhere. And you saw the angle that they had coming up just after we heard reports that right side was more favorable. It looked like Australia had played the cards right. And out of nowhere, I, don't, I think they even caught Tom Slinsby by surprise. Well, they certainly caught Lisa and Blair by surprise because that all changed so, so quickly out there on the water. And as Blair said, what was really good was that the Emirates Great Britain managed to get the split. They managed to get sailing a different direction. We're going to go left while they go right. And that was crucial. It gave them the opportunity and they made the most of it. Spain will come in, finishing in third, and I just, I don't want to say they were doomed from the get-go, Stevie, but you called that they were late to the start, and when you're racing against Ben Ainsley and Tom Slingsby, you cannot spot them anything, and that's exactly what they did. So Diego Boutin did a great job of staying in the mix, just didn't have the power, but Ben Ainsley, as we approach that fifth leg, they are halfway up, nowhere near the Australians, the lead almost 200 meters, and then Ben Ainsley puts on the nitrous, and they go into full afterburner mode as they take the win here. It is Emirates GBR, they win the French Sail Grand Prix in Saint Tropez. Turn off, huh? My jive. What do you want us to do? Okay, just gonna jive here. And it has been a time, Stevie, since we've had Emirates <laughs> GBR popping the champagne corks and getting the win. Well, we've had to scratch the grey cells actually a little bit, Todd, because it's actually about May 2021, which was the start of season two since right. they've won an event. It's been a long time between drinks for Ben Ainsley and the crew. And well, now they're going to get their champagne moment here, and it's been a long time coming, but what a performance. Shifty conditions, they took tricky, advantage yeah. of a good really shift. Tricky. There you go, Ainsley yeah. there, tricky. Battle. Definitely looked tricky, and it definitely was a good battle, but what a show they've put on for the fans on the shore in San Tropez. And San Tropez, well, Thanks, thank Bobby. you very much. You delivered such now, an incredible race yeah. there. Wow, what a day of racing. Just when you the thought it was Australia claiming yet another victory, just getting into the final, it is Emirates GBR <laughs> raising the ghosts of the past, and they scorch the course and get into the final and win it all. Well, here we go. This was the race to the final today. And of course, it, a lot of it has come down to the starting, but perhaps more than any other event, there have been overtaking opportunities and maneuvers after gate one, mark one, sorry. You know, the wind has been shifty. There's been boats on and off the foils. And Ainsley, what he has done well today on board Emirates GBR is they've managed to pick the shorter distance. Whenever there's been an opportunity to minimize distance, they found it. They've done a good job of that. 
And that has helped because any time you did make a mistake, you fall off the foils with these extra manoeuvres, it just makes life very, very hard for you. As the day's gone on, the British, right. when they started well, then we saw the resurgence of the Australian crew. We showed them flex their muscles before the final again. They were back in the pack early on in the race. But again, the shifty wind means even if you're in the pack, even if you were a little bit back, there was opportunity aplenty if you could execute manoeuvre as well. And well, if there's any team that can do that, it's Tom Slingsby and his Australian crew top. Got to take hats off though to Spain. They go home to Championship Sunday, not afraid of the big moment. They finish in a second in a second to get themselves into the final for the second event in a row. As you pointed out, Australia winning race number five, they punched their ticket in. But for the Spanish, they are really showing us something. Yeah, they're showing they can deal with the pressure as well, but what they're going to have to take away from this is here we see the best time, Rolex best time start was Emirates Great Britain, and they were perfect timing, just 0 0.027 seconds behind the line. But positionally, the Australians were just on the inside. They controlled the lead to Mark 1. Now, I don't think Australia has ever been overtaken when they've led at Mark 1 in a final. This is, I think, the first time that's ever happened in Sail GP, and we see the shift that Britain got. Look, they're progressing nearly directly up the ladder lines. They're sailing directly towards the next gate. Huge gains, and there he is, Ben Ainsley. Look at that. Acting <laughs> skills, sailing skills, whatever you need. He Directing. certainly made his point well. And that point was turned into a win. What a great moment for Emirates Great Britain. Now, here's a look at that start that really stole the show. GBR and Australia were focusing on each other, kind of leaving the Spanish to do their own thing which it makes it even that more impressive that GBR nailed their timing. They were exactly on the line and going faster than both of the other boats. It doesn't get much better than that for a start. Unfortunately, that puts Spain out of the picture. But then look at these numbers and you know what, GBR really deserved to win this because not only were they the fastest boat on the water by one kilometre an hour, they also sailed the shortest distance and stayed up on the foils longer than both of the other teams while still doing an extra manoeuvre. Wow, what a day of racing here in Saint-Tropez as Emirates GBR gets the win. They get into the final and they come from behind and pull off, not the unthinkable, but an amazing result as they get the 10 points. Australia finishing in second on the nine points and Spain making it in the final. They finish in third and pick up eight championship points for season four. Oh, beautiful scenery, but let's digest and let's talk to those who were involved in today's battle. We'll start with Spain, Sail GP, Diego Botin for the second event in a row. Diego, you and your squad make it into the final. It was a tough start for you, but you guys battled on. What was the difference in today's race and not being able to get the win like you did in Los Angeles? Yeah, um, obviously we we didn't start quite well. Uh, we Our timing, we were two seconds late in the start and yeah, when, when you are in windward, obviously that that turns into a very weak position. So uh, from there, we we try to make a couple of moves, but uh, yeah, the the Brits were always shutting them down, and they did a perfect job of of sailing the course. So yeah, big congrats. Big congrats indeed. And what a start you've had so far to season four. There's not a lot of time now until you head to to Italy. Presumably, the team are feeling very confident and very happy at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it's an unbelievable start for us. Uh, we we couldn't imagine such a start, um, and yeah, we it feels a bit that we are getting the most out of everything. But uh, yeah, um, the, the the team is feeling super pumped, and and probably tougher times will arrive. But we are super, super, super happy out the start of the season. Well, for us. Don't don't hang your heads, Diego, because you guys were in a position that seven other teams would have loved to have been in, and now you look towards Toronto. The big question is, can Spain make it into their third final in a row when you get to Italy? We will see. We will see. <laughs> Everything can happen. Diego, appreciate your time. Congratulations to you and your crew, and we will see you in Toronto. Spain sail GP for the second event in a row. They make it into the final. Stevie, this time they don't win it. He, he called it. I mean, you can't spot, you know, that two or three seconds to Tom Slingsby and Ben Ainsley and hope that you're going to be out in front.
but it comes down to such small, small details. Yeah. And, you know, they're going to have to be very, very happy. They will see themselves way up on that leaderboard again. And brilliant for their season, but also really good, I think, because they'll have a lot of lessons to take away from this event. So here's how it all shook down. It is Emirates GBR. They take the 10 championship season points to add to their lot. Australia, they came into this event in first place overall. They have nine points finishing in second. Spain again in the final. They'll pick up eight. Rockwell Denmark just missing out. They finished in fourth, just ahead of the USA, who finished in fifth. And it's France, Germany, New Zealand. They're going to have to bounce back big in Italy. And Switzerland and Canada rounding out the 10. Australia Sail GP are the three-time reigning and defending champions. Tom Slingsby, that was one heck of a race. At what point in that race did you think, I think we got this thing locked up, or were you always keeping your head on a swivel knowing that Ben Ainsley was still in the hunt? Uh, yeah, no, I, I didn't think we had it locked up. This, this venue is just so patchy and shifty, and felt like we uh, were doing really well. We were sailing great. Uh, we knew Ben was going to split sides no matter what um, what way we went at the bottom mark. We knew he was going to switch with us and so we just thought let's round the mark cleanly, get onto uh, the same tack as him and try to get across to cover him and just as we were looking really good and as we came into that intersection he had 40 degrees further right with uh, right wind direction and more pressure and we were just in no man's land. And yeah, honestly, if we didn't tack there and we went further, we might have lost more, you never know. So, I was aggressive in defending, but it didn't work, unfortunately, and uh, congratulations to Ben. Yeah, well, they certainly uh, certainly made quite a point of, uh, of acting out very upset with you, them in front of you. Ben Ainsley's possibly up for an Oscar after that one. Uh, but, yeah, another great result for you, Tom, and I suppose looking ahead to Taranto, you'll be feeling the team's in pretty good place. Yeah, we did. We sailed really well. Um, really happy with everyone, and yeah, as everyone seems to know, we've uh, we haven't done well here in in Saint Tropez, but this is a great result. Uh, we're off to a great start in the season. We're sailing well, um, so looking forward to Taranto. Tom, appreciate your time, and uh, you guys going to Taranto now with a two-point lead overall in the championship. So well done to you. We will see you in Italy. Tom Slingsby in Australia Sail GP. Finishing in second place. A little bit of dejection on his face, Stevie. It looked like they may have had that thing locked up, but not for an amazing race from Emirates GBR. They get it done. Hannah Mills, Ben Ainsley, the entire crew. You can mention them all because they all did an amazing job of getting that win. Yeah, I think Neil Hunt and Nick Hutton at the front there, the grinders. You can see how tired Nick looks. And, uh, you know, there's an awful lot of effort going into trimming that big wing sail on a day like today. Very physical out in Luke Parkinson, the, the flight controller, and Ian Jensen, the wing trimmer. He, you know, they've been demanding a lot from each other. It's a tight crew. It's a very experienced, yeah. high-performing crew. They won't like having not won for a long sure. time. There'll be a lot of fired-up people on that boat. And to have finished second again would have been pretty disappointing. So to be back at the front of the fleet, big moment. Well, the champions of the French Sail Grand Prix in Saint-Tropez, it's Emirates GBR. They get the win. Ben Ainsley joins us now. Ben, be honest, after day number one and race number two, when you guys finished in eighth place, did you feel like maybe Saint-Tropez is not your kind of race course, or did you think we can definitely bounce back and win this whole thing? Yeah, no, it's uh, always a bit like that with this uh, race course. It wins up and down so much that... It's it's really tricky. So we, we expected some big gains and losses, and I think we saw that for all of the teams. And um, we just had to hang in there and keep keep the sailing the best we could. I think the team did a great job all weekend, making the best of what we had. And Hannah, as always, trying to get us in the right spot on the race course and reading the breeze, which is which was incredibly hard out here. So as always, great team effort. So Hannah, that uh, left turn at the bottom, that was an obvious decision, then, was it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, always obvious, Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a little while between victories for uh, for you guys, so it must be a, a big moment for you. It's, I think it's May 2021 since you were last at the top of the podium. This must mean a lot. Yeah, th thanks for reminding us of that, Stevie. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you're right. It has it has it has been a while, and it's been uh, it's been a frustrating one because you know we've obviously got a great team, and there were times there where just things weren't going our way. And it's uh, taken a lot of, you know, dedication, and determination, just to keep plugging away and get ourselves back into it. You know, finishing third last season, getting into that finals race, 
bit of a disappointment, or well, it was a disappointment, um, coming away with third in that, and then struggling the first two events of this season. So the team have had to dig deep, and you know, big shout out to Rob Wilson, our coach, as well, for helping with that, and and you know, the shore team that has always done a brilliant job getting this boat in perfect condition for racing. All right, Ben, we appreciate it. Go get some work on that right arm because you gave out a good workout on that uh, a near collision with Australia. But <laughs> congratulations nonetheless as Emirates GBR get the win. They take the title here at the France Sail Grand Prix in Saint-Tropez. What a crew, what a team effort, Stevie. And I think they said it right. Everyone had a part in that, and they got it done in the most critical time against the big giant. The, the, the flying ruse looked like they were on their way to another victory. They will love that, I'm sure, and I'm pretty confident. We can see them standing up here. It's been a while since they got to do this, but they have done it a fair few times in their past, so I'm expecting a uh, successful job of dealing with this celebration and collecting of a prize. Very happy team and, uh, and good for them. Emily, I think with their resume, they probably have not forgotten how to pop the cork on the champagne and how to celebrate <laughs> a win. No, I think they know what they're doing and uh, they're pretty happy to be back up there. I want to welcome Hervé Berville of France. He is the Minister of Sea, making the presentation for the trophy for the France Sail Grand Prix here in Saint-Tropez. This is event three of season four. We'll see if this gives Emirates GBR the bounce back they need to get themselves back in the hunt. They came into this event, remember, they were in sixth place overall coming to this event. This would be a nice bump for them as they will move up the ladder board all the way to fourth overall. And now the celebration can truly begin here in Saint-Tropez. Here we go, Santa Pay showers. <laughs> and it's been a long time coming for Emirates GBR, but they get it done as we take a look now at the season four standings after these three events. Australia now two points clear of Spain on 24. Rockwell Denmark sits in 23 points on third and Emirates GBR, the big winners, they move up to fourth. New Zealand, USA, France, Canada, Switzerland, they look to Italy. Well, coming up, we've got one more big event just down the road, and you won't want to miss that. Coming up September 23rd and 24th, it will be the Rockwell Sail Grand Prix in Toronto. Conditions could be very similar to what we've seen here in France. The only thing we know for sure, it will be all on as the 10 international teams go to battle. Get ready for some chaos here. Oh, oh put it down. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit choppy, isn't it? And before we say goodbye, Emily Nagel, final thoughts as we look to Italy. I think it's going to be a really exciting event. We haven't been back there since uh, season two. So all to play for, and let's see who ends up on the top. What an awesome weekend's racing, and let's just hope our Kiwi team can be back and yeah. on the start line. We missed them today. Well, we want to congratulate once again Emirates GBR. They get the win here. They take on the title of the France Sail Grand Prix here in Saint-Tropez. It is now on to event number four in Toronto, Italy. We'll see you on September 23rd and 24th. So, for Stevie Morrison, Emily Nagel, Lisa Darmanin, and Blair Took, I'm Todd Harris saying so long for now from beautiful Saint-Tropez. on day two here in Saint-Tropez. Emirates GBR is gonna make it to the finish line. The Aussies come to race five in Saint-Tropez. Watch for the line to turn one. It's gonna yeah. Yeah. Here we go, Australia have gotta get out of the way. Give the win to Emirates GBR in Saint-Tropez.